Oh, I'm a registered nurse. I graduated from St. Luke's College of Nursing in Sioux City in 1994. I worked in an emergency room for a short time, um, and then I started working in long-term care. And from the nursing facility, I was assistant director of nursing, worked with infection control, uh, quality assurance, and staffing, and then um, from there I went came to the Area Agency on Aging and worked as a services coordinator with the Medicaid waiver program. When someone 65 or older applies for assistance to pay for their nursing facility stay, our agency is contracted to do an evaluation to make sure that they meet that level of care that would require nursing facility care. After that, if we can develop a safe plan and if the client chooses, they can choose to have the option of in-home services or assisted living or nursing facility care. So we are part of the nursing facility continuum of care, long-term care. Most of our clients are 65 or older, uh, have a variety of health problems and disabilities, um, some mental illness. Uh, we have a lot of clients that suffer from dementia or Alzheimer's. And uh, what we do when we do an assessment, we look at their activities of daily living and uh, the activities of daily living that are required to have assistance with are like bathing, dressing, grooming, transferring, um, continence, toileting, and then we look at their medical needs. When we look at their medical needs, um, we look at observation and assessment, what kind of medical treatments they need and what kind of monitoring they need. And then we look at their uh, memory. And the memory portion of our testing involves cognition, orientation, judgment, and communication skills. In 1991, I was engaged in farming with my dad, and I was having a lot of problems with asthma and respiratory problems. So there was a big nursing shortage at that time, which there still is a big nursing shortage. I looked in the newspapers and I looked at all the ads and I saw all the ads in nursing, so I decided to, that I'd always liked helping people. So I thought, I'm gonna try it, and I enrolled in nursing school. It was, it was almost an accident. I was working in the emergency room and I was working six at night, six in the morning, driving back and forth. And we had five kids and it was kind of a hectic schedule. And a friend of mine actually worked in a nursing facility. And she asked me if I would consider working there, which I had never really considered a career in long-term care because when you get out of nursing school, you think, wow, I want to be I want to be, you know, on the hands-on. I want to be in the fast pace. But uh, I thought, well, I'm going to try it. I tried it, and actually, it wasn't a lot easier than the emergency room because when you're working on, in the nursing facility in a rural area, you're pretty much on your own. Doctors phone call away, but you don't have all the technology and the, and the uh, tools that you have in a, a big city hospital. So it, it was challenging and very rewarding. Um, the elderly population is almost always extremely grateful for any help that, they, that you can give them. My typical day, I spend a lot of time uh, either in the office or I'll go out to a nursing facility and I'll visit with someone who wants to go home. Um, with, when I go to the nursing facility, again, I, I do the assessment process and we look at their activities of daily living, what they need for assistance, what kind of deficits they have. Um, if they have any mental health needs as far as behaviors, any uh, safety needs, and then of course we always look at the medical needs and then their memory needs. And we may see two or three people a day or we may see one person a day and then a lot of times we'll come back to the office. We have to develop that plan of services and supports, make sure we can meet their needs and set up those services. Contact Home Health, contact Lifeline, find someone to mow their lawn, scoop their snow. Um, make sure that Home Health's probably involved if they have any medical needs. High school students should probably look really hard at, the, at taking what they now call the hard sciences, the biology, the chemistry, the anatomy, the physiology, take those classes, it'll help them more in college. Chemistry is a, is a seemingly tough class across the board from all the schools I've talked to, and um, I got through chemistry. <laughs> I, uh, as a non-trad, 
hadn't taken any classes and, and I didn't take any science classes in high school beyond my sophomore year. But uh, I, I got through them, it was tough. Um, uh, they need to, if they're, if they're serious about nursing, it is a rigorous uh, curriculum. And the nursing instructors are very, um, they're very diligent and they want you to do the best uh, that you can do. They're very supportive, but they're very persistent on everything being correct, which is what you want to be when you're a nurse because uh, you don't want to make mistakes and you want to be very detail oriented and you really need to be a people person. You need to be a good communicator. Um, you need to have empathy for people. You need to care about people. Um, nursing isn't really about the money, and although everybody thinks nurses make a lot of money and a lot of, a lot of them are well paid. <laughs> Us are well paid. Um, but it's really about taking care of people. When I went to nursing school, traditionally they taught us reality orientation. And when we got out in the field, I'm sure my peers would say, but when I got out in the field, I realized that reality orientation doesn't work. That uh, if you tell someone who's looking for their husband and they don't realize their husband's been gone for five or 10 years, that their husband passed away, they relive that grief every day if you tell them that. So um, Alzheimer's and dementia clients are extremely uh, heart-wrenching and difficult to work with sometimes. Um, but a lot of them can be kept safe in assisted living or in their home if they have a proper support system. The most rewarding part is when you see someone in the nursing facility or in their home and they're beginning to lose all hope that they'll ever be able to live independently alone. And you can provide those services. You can find them someone to help them to stay at home or they can go to assisted living and have a private room and they can maintain their independence and stay in the living situation of their choice. The most challenging is when you get someone who wants to go home and they're determined to go home, but they don't have the support systems or they don't have the good judgment or they don't have the cognitive ability to stay safely at home, but they still have the determination and the drive and the desire, but we can't help them because we can't keep them safe. They, uh, they may wander out or um, they may burn their house down. You know, there's some safety factors there that just, they don't recognize that they can't stay at home. And in our judgment, we recognize that they couldn't be safely, they couldn't safely have their needs met at home. I think the, the uh, future prospect for nursing and jobs in nursing is very good, very high. There's going to be a strong demand. I think I'm probably in the uh, average age nurse right now. I'll be 49 and there's a lot of nurses who are looking at retiring. There's a lot of turnover in nursing, uh, typically a female field where there's a lot of turnover because the women like to start families, want to stay home with their kids, which they should be able to stay home with their kids. Um, so should the men. <laughs> but uh, the job outlook is really, really strong and it's a really rewarding career.